Hello and welcome to this video about serving open source large language models on GKE using L4 GPUs. I'm Mofi, a developer advocate on Google Kubernetes Engine focusing on batch and AI platforms. And I have a special guest with me here today, Brandon. Brandon, would you like to introduce yourself? Hey Mofi, thanks for having me. Yeah, my name is Brandon Royal. I am a solution specialist focused on uh, GKE. My primary responsibility is working with customers on all things AI on GKE, so helping with inference and training and all sorts of fun topics as it relates to deploying AI on Kubernetes. So Brandon, why should our users be learning about AI on GKE? Yeah, we're super excited about all the AI innovations that are happening around us, in particular the recent announcements around Gemini and a lot of the state-of-the-art models that are now available through APIs. But we're also equally excited about all the innovation that's happening in the open LLM ecosystem. And increasingly, customers are coming to us saying, hey, I need to actually build generative models or LLMs into the core capabilities of my applications, into my products. How do I do that? How do I do that where I'm taking advantage of investments that I've already made in, say, tooling and automation? How do I do that in a way that delivers the price performance and latency expectations that my users have? And how do I do that in a way that's cost effective and efficient? Right? That's really where Kubernetes and in particular GKE really shines. And so we have the opportunity to talk about all the different models that are now available in the ecosystem that users can go and deploy on their own. But we also need to recognize that this is not a one size fits all sort of problem. So we are seeing customers adopt this sort of multi model approach where one model doesn't necessarily rule them all. There, there might be one model that makes a whole lot of sense. You might want a state-of-the-art Gemini model for particular cases, but you might need something that's smaller and leaner and more fit for purpose. And that's where the sort of vibrancy of the open LLM ecosystem, as well as the sort of capabilities of GKE, making it easy to deploy and consume those models really shines. Yeah, and that's something I have seen echoed in uh, my interaction in the community, as well as customers. So super excited to see some of those happening. Uh, um, I, I heard you have a demo that is ready almost to showcase right now. And I also heard you're going to do that live right yeah, now. Yeah, sure. We'll do it live. As we tee up the demo and the discussion, I, I get into a lot of conversations with customers that are just really trying to understand the best practices of how do I deploy a model and really how do I think about the sort of future of LLM inference in my applications. Again, Customers are thinking about building them into products, especially digital native, or customers that are really investing in integrating LLMs and generative AI into their apps. They're thinking about how do I do this in a way that allows me to grow and expand over time, right? So that sort of multi-model approach. And there's a, a couple of key things that we found as consistent patterns. Now, one is really thinking about exposing an inference API. So most of the models that you can deploy today, you can just do direct inference on them. But in order to really have that scalable, just like anything, we want to expose it via an API. And we want to do that API, uh, we want to expose that API, I should say, in a way that's consistent so it can be consumed. If you swap one model for the next, or you change a new version or add new capabilities, you want to have a consistent API that your users can ultimately consume. And that's really important. That's going to help you to ultimately be future-proof in terms of taking advantage of the next model, the next capability that inevitably will come out in the coming weeks, months, and years ahead. The second is really to think about job execution and the ability to consistently deploy a job so we can do fine tuning or training or uh, retrieval augmented generation. Like these are things that are executed in a job. It's important to have those separated. And then the last is having a consistent infrastructure API. And this is again, where Kubernetes is going to shine we can basically have the same set of infrastructure deployed in, in cloud with you know, GKE, uh, but we could also consume it in an on-premises with something like Anthos uh, or even a multi-cloud deployment. So Brandon, in this video, we're using an L4 GPU. With the advancement in the recent GPU architecture and availability of things like H100, A100, L4 is a relatively smaller GPU. Why choosing L4 in this case is a good idea? Yeah, there, there is no one GPU to rule them all. Ultimately, as we see more evolution in accelerator architectures, we're seeing more fit-for-purpose GPUs being deployed for various use cases. And the L4 is based on the Ada Lovelace architecture and is really designed for maximum price performance for inference. So in this particular case, 
we're going to show L4s just on inference and, and how to do that very efficiently and effectively. But it depends on your use case. Ultimately, do you need a high throughput, low latency sort of GPU? Or are you okay having a, a little bit more latency with higher price performance? These are all sort of decisions that you need to go through as you pick the right GPU. But ultimately, L4 is a great choice. It's available across GCP. It's available directly within GKE and GKE Autopilot. And it offers a leading price performance option when it comes to inference. Well, yeah, that all makes sense. If you're ready, let's jump sure. into it. Yeah, that. let's jump into it. In this demo, we're going to focus on quickly deploying a model so we can inference via that API abstraction we talked about earlier. Now, the open source ecosystem makes this super easy. Not only are there open models, there's also a set of open tools and what are commonly referred to as LLM middleware that make it much easier to operationalize the inference of those models. So one of those open source tools that I'm going to talk about showing the demo is called text generation inference. And text generation inference provides an inference server, essentially, just as it states. But ultimately, it also helps to operationalize that. So we get metrics and a bunch of other things, too, along with uh, the, the model serving itself. We're going to deploy the Llama 2 13B model, uh, which is a chat-based model from Meta. Now, to get started, I've got a clean cluster that I literally just deployed just a few minutes before we uh, started this video. And you can see we've got really nothing deployed to it. So really completely clean. I'm going to show you how quick and easy it is to deploy uh, one of those models directly to GKE uh, Autopilot and how Autopilot will automatically scale based on the resource requests that we have for that particular model. So let's go to that uh, L4 demo here. So essentially what we want to do is deploy our first model. And in order to do that, uh, what we essentially need is the hugging face token. And that hugging face token basically allows for that text generation inference container to pull down the model directly from hugging face. We're going to grab that token. And then we're going to load that token up as a secret into my cluster. That way, the text generation inference container has access to that token so it can pull down the model and weights directly from Hugging Face. Uh, the next thing we'll do is do our uh, deployment. So we've got our Llama 2 13B deployment. Um, and in that deployment, which I'll walk you through here shortly, we've got our deployment manifest as well as our service. And we want to expose this as an API. So we, we've also defined uh, a service which automatically plugs us into GCP. Uh, external or internal load balancers. So Brandon, we needed the Hugging Face token in this case because Llama 2 happens to be a gated model, right? Yeah, that's a good clarification, Mopi. So yeah, in this particular case, you're exactly right. This is a gated model that's available through Meta via Hugging Face. So we do need to apply our Hugging Face token in that particular case. If you're using a non-gated model, something like a Falcon or a Mistral, you won't have to do this particular step. Fantastic. So let's, so we've created our Secret, we've applied our Kubernetes manifest. Let's go take a look at what that deployment manifest is and how it's structured. Again, what we're essentially using is a text generation inference container that's available directly from Hugging Face. And this makes the whole process of operationalizing inference super straightforward and easy. We're specifying the resources that we ultimately need for this deployment. And in this case, we want to actually do sharding between multiple GPUs. So we're going to use NCCL under the covers essentially to shard our inference across multiple GPUs on our node. So as we're specifying our resource requirements for this particular container, we want to be sure we're specifying the number of GPUs that we ultimately need. So we're going to specify that here as well as if we have specific memory or CPU requirements, we can do that as well. I will specify some other details in here, including the specific model that we want. So here's the fully qualified model name as it's defined in Hugging Face, the number of shards that we want across our GPUs, we also want to be really efficient here. So we want to leverage some of the uh, quantization capabilities. In this case, we can use the four bit bits and bytes quantization. And this is just provided as a simple parameter, uh, essentially an environment variable that we pass to text generation inference, and it will take care of the rest. We'll also want to specify our hugging face token again, because this is a Llama 2 model. There's also some little things around volume mounts we want to be sure we take advantage of. Since we want to do very fast read and writes, we can use something like a persistent or ephemeral volume claim. In this case, we're going to use an ephemeral volume claim to basically uh, have an SSD that's attached to our uh, container that allows us to basically quickly read that model once it's available when the container starts. And then the last thing we're going to do is just specify the 
the type of NVIDIA accelerator we want. So we want the, the NVIDIA L4 in this particular case. So as a container is selecting the right node, we know it's gonna go to the L4. The keen eyed among you can already notice that when you first looked at the cluster, we actually had zero nodes in that cluster. So this is one of the key features of GKE Autopilot where the workload will determine what node it needs and GKE will provision that node for you and only keep that node as long as you need it. So you don't have to worry about node provisioning and what kind of nodes you need, what type of machines you would need in Autopilot anymore. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Uh, ultimately, we can now just do kubectl get nodes, and you can see that we've not only got our default node pool, but we've got that additional node that's been specified or that's been added based on our requirements. So it makes it super easy. We didn't have to worry about the underlying nodes, but they are available and we can see them and, and automatically our workload is going to be it's going to request that a node is needed. Autopilot will spin up that node and then it will be automatically scheduled uh, there. So let's really see what this looks like. So we should have all of our deployments. There's our Llama 2 deployment. And this is just spinning up here as well. So if we describe that one. We can see that it's scaling up and then deploying. Now this is a pretty large uh, model and a, a pretty large container. So it does take an initial few minutes to spin up, uh, but since we're using our uh, volume claim, we're actually gonna persist that data uh, through the life cycle of the container itself. So uh, we'll, we'll have a bit of a longer load time in the beginning, uh, but that will uh, get faster as we scale up. And if we actually go and check out the logs here, deploy the logs, we can actually see that what's happening behind the scenes is the text generation inference container is loading the model. So it's essentially downloading it from Hugging Face. It's sharding it across those two processes, those two GPUs. And then once that's available, essentially, then it will start the inference server and then we can actually go and browse the API. Yeah. So we should see our workloads deployed. We go and check that out. Now we've got our new deployment ready to go we can see it's deployed on this demo cluster. And we also wanted to expose this as an API. So in this particular case, we've got this set up as being exposed to an external load balancer so we can browse the API. We'll open that up. And to make this super easy to use, the text generation inference server also exposes the docs via Swagger. So we can actually now explore our API it's now fully documented. So as we're sharing this with other internal users that may want to consume it, we can just share the API and all the API documentation that comes along with it, which is super helpful. So if I want, I can just try out this, this example here. So we'll drop in our sample with some better prompts, using a little bit more of a structured prompt here, providing some additional parameters around how I want this to run. Executing it. And we should get a response here momentarily. Cool. And there we go. And then we got our generated text along with all of our additional metadata on you know, how long that took, how many tokens were returned. And by the way, the details of or the metrics behind the response is important too as we think about operationalizing this. And one of the additional endpoints that's exposed via the API is the Prometheus metrics. So we can actually start to now see how many requests, what the requests per second are, all the sort of standard details as you think about operationalizing any API. This is all now available through uh, a metrics-based interface. And in GK, you can consume that into Google Managed Prometheus super fast and easy. So I can basically just point that metrics API or metrics endpoint to Google Managed Prometheus, and it will automatically consume all of those metrics into my centralized cloud metrics console. So that's all well and good, but our users or most people are more used to using this large language model from some sort of a chat UI that they can interact with. Is that something easily available yeah, to share? Absolutely. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Like, like I said before, it's really important that when we're doing inference on models, we're exposing them as an API. That way they can be easily consumed by users. But consuming them on the other side using something like, like a Gradio sample chat-based application, super straightforward as well. We've got a sample Gradio deployment here. And really straightforward. Basically, what we're doing is deploying Gradio, which is a chat-based application also available through Hugging Face. And we're specifying our model URL as an internal service. So the service that we're exposing for our Llama 213B model, we're just passing in as a URL, some basic other information that we need in order to start this, this container. And then we're exposing it via a service in, in a similar way that I just exposed my inference application. 
We already got that deployed. So we've got our external IP we'll grab here. And we'll flip over to the browser. And there's our app. We got what is Kubernetes? We'll submit that as our question. There we go. And there's our response. The so same thing that we're getting out of the API, but now in a friendly chat based interface. And you, you can see that took what 30 seconds to deploy. So by containerizing these, these tools, deploying them using our existing automation, we can make this whole process even faster. Awesome. Yeah. This looks very consumable. On top of that, all of that is an API that you can consume within your own application if you want to. Yeah. For whatever you want. Yeah, exactly. And hopefully in a future video, we can talk a little bit about how you can consume an application uh, API with tools like Langchain as an example. So I might want to do more than just directly expose the, the model as an inference endpoint. I might want to consume that and do more interesting stuff in chaining or agents using things like, uh, like Langchain. So there's other really cool and interesting things you can obviously do with those APIs once they're published and available. And of course, you can scale them up as you need for your users. Since these are uh, containers and deployments, I can very easily scale those up based on the, the metrics that I talked about earlier. That sounds awesome. Brandon, thank you so much for showing me all this cool stuff. We should love to have you again to talk to our audiences about all these cool things that we didn't get a time to talk to about in this video. Yeah, thanks for having me, Mofi. Uh, it was really exciting to be here and uh, happy to share this stuff. And we're just really scratching the surface. It's the easy stuff. Uh, excited to get into some more of the, the detailed and deeper topics in a future session. In this video, we got to learn how to use L4 GPUs on a GK Autopilot cluster to deploy open source large language models. In a future video, we'll come back with some more and exciting topics in the AI world and running workloads on GKE.